What do you do with that nice. thing? So what do you pe- mean? You that's what people don't we yeah. circumcise people? <laughs> I wouldn't know about. You could. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. It's the same tool my <laughs> rabbi used on me 43 years ago. <laughs> Welcome to the best hour of their day podcast with your host Jason Fernandez and me, Jason Ackerman. With more than 20 years in the business, as both coaches and affiliate owners, our passion is to help create world-class affiliates and coaches by building better boxes. boxes. Welcome to the best hour of your day. All right, we're here. The man, the myth, the legend, Adrian Bosman. I appreciate you two sitting <laughs> yeah. and letting <laughs> we're, me stand. We're trying to, we're I don't to. get the whole standing thing. Yeah. I just, it's too much. I just, uh, I'm usually so. Well, you have small. a standing desk over here, don't you? Or yeah, do you I know, sit with us? At I your do both. I, okay. You know, anybody who works on their feet all day long will probably argue that sitting is the worst thing in the world this for is you. New but. cigarettes, they say yes. <laughs> anyway, so you don't agree? Too many, too many absolutes. You don't agree that sitting is the new cigarettes? Not at all. <laughs> no. Is it close? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> well, you know, you first no. of all, you have your own podcast with Pat Sherwood. Yes. Can you give it a little plug here? Sure, yeah. It's very not random. Um, Beyond the Whiteboard is good enough to uh, do the legwork for us and host it. Uh, Pat and I get to talk about whatever we want, and most of that is just like basic CrossFit theory. Um, Taking it back to the roots, I uh, I really am not into the culture these days of everybody complaining on the internet incessantly about everything, and I think it's much more productive to talk about the fruits, and so that's what we try to do. Do you think... In 2001 to the 2007 8 era, when CrossFit was really booming, or I wouldn't say booming, but growing and becoming what it is today, if the internet and social media was where it is now, it would have had the opportunity to? Or do you think people would have just shit on it right away? That's a good question. I don't know. No, I think it would have. It would have followed a similar trajectory in my mind. I, I think it would have had to have. Um, I think it might have gone faster. You think potentially? You think yeah. negative talk on the internet would have made Let's it? Be, no, no. Well, I, I think that's a new that's a new sport. A negative talk on the internet <laughs> yeah. is a newer sport. Um, I don't think. I, I think it would have been largely positive or faster. It would have just escalated things because people would have been putting yeah. their workouts. Yeah, the, the, the thirteen fourteen era would have been two to three years ago. That would have been two thousand nine, probably. What's the yeah, thing? Maybe. What do you hate the most right now about the internet's influence on CrossFit? I try not to hate. I don't. What know. do you dislike the most? I, <laughs> Um, what do I dislike the most? Oh, geez, I don't know. Um, I, I think that it's like any other tool, the way that you choose to use it and engage with it is probably going to dictate whether it's a positive or negative thing. It can get messy when everybody has access to a microphone and they can put whatever thought they have out instantly. I don't think that's necessarily bad. It's just difficult to wade through sometimes and and if you believe that that is real it can be really difficult but you know if you frame it correctly you're like yeah the internet's not real social media is not real um yeah i, so, I don't know i don't have a good answer to that my uh, well, fifth crossfit i opened no. my fifth yeah. crossfit affiliate fair enough <laughs> I just opened my fifth I never said I was going to be a good interview. I was really hoping you were going to solve the internet problems for us today, boss. I'm trying to make a joke here, but I was going to say, I just opened my fifth CrossFit affiliate in the metaverse. Sounds like a humble (laughs) humble brag. (laughs) Listen, I hope you're prepared for an hour of humble brags coming from you. First metaverse affiliate. How many NFTs can you fit in your virtual affiliate? That's how you pay via (laughs) NFTs in the the metaverse. I don't think you understand NFTs then. (laughs) How many how many cartoon apes fit Ooh. in your metaverse affiliate? <laughs> yeah. We'll see. I've, yeah. I've, I've, we're not fully planned out. Are you yet. Bitcoin or elephant? What 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 kind of what kind of, what kind of <laughs> we accept Bitcoin? Yeah, we cr- do accept Bitcoin. Well, is there any topic that you and Pat disagree on consistently? Um, Let no. Us mo- choose a side. I, I, like broadly, no. We're pretty much of the same opinion. I think like we kind of came up in the same era, same kind of mentality. Um, you know, Pat's very no nonsense, uh, very straight up kind of person. I and miss, I really appreciate I miss that. having that. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's great. So that's been really fun is to reconnect with him because, you know, there were a few years there where I didn't get to uh, interact with him as much as, as I had in the past. So that was cool, is cool. Um, but as far as disagreements, not really. Like sometimes on the specific application of things we will, um, but broadly we're 
we're pretty in agreement. I want to kind of nerd out on that because I think yeah. you guys have some really, I think, killer conversations just around CrossFit, like basic CrossFit methodology, programming, things of that nature. What do you think it might be? This could, this could go a couple different ways, but one of the more misunderstood or misinterpreted Wait, things. Can you hold that thought? Yeah. I thought about what I don't like about the internet. Nice. The we're back. Uh, we're back. Yeah. We're back. Good. What right. you hate the most. <laughs> what, what I dislike strongly the most about the internet <laughs> is that it breeds a sense of entitlement. Everybody, oh, I good. like that everybody has the access to so much information. I think that's a big win. It can be noisy. It can be hard to discern like what's good and what's not so worth your time. Um, but that's fine. That There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but I think that people are in this really weird space right now where they're like, well, I put it out there and I ask the question, therefore I deserve Mode a response. An answer, yeah. Yes. And I think that kind of entitlement that's, and the instantaneous entitlement that that breeds is goofy. And so that's my least favorite thing about the internet. I, I love it. I, I think you're that. right. Hey, yeah. b- before you go any further, talk about old school. As our ex. Yeah, making a comeback. Pretty cool. Well, they, CrossFit's been around just long enough now that retro is a thing. I yeah, I yeah. I guess so. And As yeah. Rx is old school. Yep. Like, that was true, the CrossFit brand. True story. Back in the day, they sponsored me, by which they you sent were a me, sponsored athlete. Sent me a couple T-shirts. And, that was uh, what sponsored uh, yeah, was, yeah, right? Yeah, like, right? Like you were like, <laughs> I made it. I got it. I got a Wad killer shirt. I got <laughs> the stronger, <laughs> my girlfriend stronger <laughs> than you shirt. They had this weird. I don't think they ever sold it, but they had this weird like half shell bag that they gave to all of us. It was very strange. Yeah, it was cool. It Who was else was sponsored green. back then? Nadia Shatila was okay. uh, was there. I flow master. Who's a professional chef now? Yeah, apparently. I want to say. Yeah, owner of Belltown originally. It looks delicious. Oh, uh, I get, every time I just go there. Her and Bill Hinegar, I just go there for the food. Bill is out of control <laughs> with with his yeah culinary endeavors these days. Um, was you Nadia? I'm trying to think who else. I I want to say that day. Miranda, formerly Old Droid, currently Alcaraz, uh, was also sponsored by them. I think. I, think I can't remember right. the other. I think so. you're right. Yeah. So and and I also was going to say in your new role, which we'll talk about later. Do you lean on Pat at all? Because he's a great for, programmer. The, oh, oh, you mean for CrossFit for cross, stuff? Yeah. Uh, not really. I mean, like every once in a while, I'll bounce a concept off of him, but nothing specific. He yeah. creates, in my opinion, the most elo- eloquent and devastating workouts. Like, too yeah. simple. Like, oh, he's classic, brilliant. Hey, well, live your life in couplets. I mean, Pat said that originally, right? Live your life in couplets and triplets. The reason that it's so good is because he does not get distracted by fluff. And he does not feel the need... I'll speak for him, even though I probably shouldn't. <laughs> he does not feel the need to engage with novelty for the sake of novelty. I think there's a lot of people currently who have been around, you know, three, four, five plus years. And you start to think that because you've experienced something multiple times that it's less effective mm-hmm. or that somehow it needs to be dressed up to be better or to be more appealing to people. And I, I reject that wholeheartedly. I think that there's a time to push the boundaries a little bit. There's a time to reframe and, and get back to, you know, core tenants or whatever, but just pushing boundaries because you think it will be spectacle or because you think you saw it somewhere and it has to be included or you're worried that somebody else might do it. Like there's a million reasons that are not good to bring something in that's dubious. And so Pat does not stand for any of that. And I love it. I want to get to this later, but on the note, like now that you're programming What's your official title again? Competition director. Competition it's very official. Competition director. <laughs> There's there must be a balance there because yeah. you are programming for the games, which is on television. Sure. And it's at the culmination of a year. Yeah. So how do you balance that? I mean, you doing Fran. If you simply program Fran, Fern and I would be like, "That's a sick work." Like yeah. when Mary was programmed a few years ago, yep. right? Yeah. And people were like, "This is boring." I'm like, "You're it's not amazing. out here <laughs> watching people do pistols on their toes, right?" Yeah. Like. <laughs> So how do you find that balance of like, this is CrossFit, but we need to do this for the yeah, games? Yeah, well, I think that it depends on what part of the season you're talking about. It depends on who we're talking about. You know, if we're talking at the at the games finals, big dogs, top of the heap, then yeah, there has to be a certain amount of spectacle there. But that spectacle doesn't need to be something that's so far out of left field that it, it just kind of leaves people asking why like it still has to be a legitimate test of fitness not something that is you know a circus trick or something that's um just a little bit too fancy almost what was the yeah. big sphere thing we did that one year oh the snail the snail oh, like yeah, that yeah, cool. you you like the snail absolutely what about cheese curds 
cheese curds are fine. They're just a sandbag. Just a sandbag. You know, like it's, yeah, it's so a sandbag Dave, in the past, has done a good job exactly what you're saying. Like yeah. Creating the test, but... Well, and you have challenge. to understand that like it's a big stage, so you need big things there. You and it need needs things to make that sense are going to be kind of marquee events. That's, TV. Yeah. Uh, but if you go back in you know, something like the Open or quarterfinals or whatever, you have this mass participation event. I, in my opinion, it's even more important that it has to be very core stuff. You know, that is not Thrusters, the time. pull up some muscle. Yeah, that is that. not the time to be introducing things that are way outside the, the bounds. Shuttle runs, things like well, that. Well, shuttle runs, I mean, <laughs> I think I think the argument to include running in any capacity. That was cool. I, I agree. Like, my argument was, like, we've never done running outside of the It's a clever way to get running in yeah. there yeah. without, and like, it's and hard to And you could do it in your gym, yeah. and if, wherever you are. The, the only other time that that's happened in an online environment for us was in 2020, the first stage where athletes competed out of their own gyms and we sent people to them. Right. And we could oh, verify yeah, yeah, yeah. a run That's loop right. for I them. Did, who'd I, you judge that? I judged Jacob Heppner. Who'd I you had, judge? Uh, yeah. um, Chandler Smith. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You yeah, went to but, Think Tank, right? But that's yep. not possible with... 300,000 people yeah. doing it. You just can't do that. You need something way more contained. Look, if they that can't get a 50-meter run, so they're not going to get a 400-meter <laughs> right, run. Right, exactly. And so the, the problem is like, okay, how do you include something so fundamental like running in a way that you can easily see it and implement it? I want to throw this out there for future use. Take it if you want. Yeah. Running in place. There you go. Just yeah, run yeah, in place stepping. for yeah. 400 meters. That's it. I Ooh, can... Yeah. Time. I feel, like, I feel like I'm done. <laughs> 100% not going to happen. That was simultaneously... Both a nightmare and a cool, a cool way that to get that done. You're talking about 2020. 2020. Oh yeah. yeah well, that, we had to yeah. walk with the measure. I remember I was at like Hepner's house. Like yeah. everyone moved. I would around. definitely not. You went to a track. Yeah, I would definitely not recommend ever doing that. Nor would I ever want to do that again. But it was it was cool that they were able to flex and get that done. It was and, necessary at the time. Yeah. And but that was a COVID thing. We and, had to and be a very small field of athletes. Right. And I mean, it was really hard to pull that off. The, the logistics that went on and the time frame we had to do it was well, and that's why you the brought logistics. In, that's why you brought in the big yeah. guns. Yeah, that's right. The that's logistics right. and the tech that was put together yeah. there in a short time frame was kind of impressive. So you were angry texting all of us on Slack for what? Well, <laughs> <laughs> like it was. I remember I was like, I remember specifically me. I didn't put my score in right away. And Bob's like, you need to put it in right away. <laughs> like, you have to be able to, you have to have thick skin to be a judge. Yes. Yes. The, the tricky thing about that competition, and probably part of the reason that I was, you know, a little short. At and the time, I say you were yelling because it was all caps, and you're like, Jay, I'm yelling at you <laughs> all right caps. now. <laughs> I would never all caps. <laughs> but the uh, competition schedule that we had was on these rolling yeah. windows that were specific to the athletes' time zones. And so, you know, that we think there was five or six of us that were running the competition behind the scenes. Uh, at the old Santa Cruz office. And then we had our teams that were dispersed in the field. And we would take shifts around the clock. I mean, it was like 24 hours. And I remember... Was, you wanted to keep it fair for people in different correct, time yeah. zones. And so it was, uh, it was hairy. I'm always, you know, still working seminar stuff like that. I'm always trying to revisit the basics. And, and what do people fundamentally misunderstand about CrossFit? To some degree, I think it's the idea of intensity, but that's my personal opinion. Yeah, I think that's a part of it. I think that most people these days aren't going to have as much grounding in the theory because there exists so much visual candy to kind of consume mm -hmm. that you can you can do that and get a pretty good sense of things without having that philosophical underpinning. <laughs> that's definitely something that's changed um over the years and and i see that on the athletic side too it's really interesting like some of the higher level athletes chandler's a great example like right. he just went and got his level one and it mm -hmm. was like this big deal which is great i mean it's really awesome to see him out there doing that i'm very surprised that more athletes at that level have not um just for no other reason than if you were competing in that sport you'd want to learn what this thing is mm -hmm. because it would probably offer you know at least a little bit more of a guidepost on how to train for it right but so that's always a little surprising to me. But uh, yeah, I think I think the theory behind it has become, I won't say commonplace, but relatively accepted in the mainstream enough mm -hmm. that people don't actually read into it and learn what it is. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a fairly, I guess, simple is probably not the right word, but I do think it is simple. Sure. I think people try to make it complex. Uh, yeah. And I think just the idea of intensity. Yeah, I would agree with you. I do also find it strange that there's there's such a large portion of competitors that yeah, just have don't. never sat yeah. for that. And I don't know yeah. if it's because they don't think it's valuable or <laughs> or what, but um do you I mean this is clearly just a 
thought experiment, but do you think that would help them as I athletes? Do. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I absolutely do. Um, yes, I, I would see no reason not to. And again, for no other reason than if you're going to engage in something and you want to do it at a high level, you want to be a professional, you should learn about that thing. Yeah. It seems like a no brainer to me. Um, you know, whether or not it's going to have somebody who's at a high level totally restructuring their training, probably not, because they probably right. do have the bu- big building blocks already. Um, but, yeah, I, I do think that centering back on the philosophy is important. Um, I guess, like, a, from a, like a more broad cultural perspective, I think this happens with any emergent culture. Mm-hmm. You know, CrossFit, when it started, was very fringe. It was uh, certainly, a, like, a 180 degrees away from what was accepted as good fitness practice. There's still plenty of people that will say that. Mm. And that's fine. They can have their opinion. But, um, you know, the idea was basically, hey, the fitness industry is this terrible wasteland of bloat and snake oil. Let's chop away all the things that are useless. Let's tell the truth about what it means to really be fit and not just in this, like, very narrow, one-dimensional way. And let's uh, create a method around that. That was the basics and now that it's so mainstream and it's everywhere and people can look to it and just pick it up in a million different ways which is great uh, I think it's harder to connect with that sometimes or you know you just I think it's almost like circle back to the original problem almost which is uh, like it starts to have some of the bloat and some of the yeah yeah yeah, exactly yeah Yeah. oh yeah for sure you see that creeping in you see people believe now that they have to engage with all these different supplements and they need all this, you know, different gear to do it well. And, you know, yeah, it's nice to have a gym that's tricked out. I mean, geez, my, my garage right. certainly. Yeah. You should, you're days, definitely short on weights. I know. So right. Yeah. <laughs> but again, like I've been collecting gear for 15, 17 right. years now. When I started, I had a kettlebell still have it. I bought that kettlebell in like 2000 and a door jam pull up bar. And that was my gym, you know, and I, there, I didn't have, I'd never ran out of things to do. You still wouldn't. Exactly, yeah. You know, as three people that have been on staff for a very long, I mean, Boz, what are you, over 300 seminars? Yeah, but I mean, I haven't been doing seminars in a long time. So. When was your last one? Do you 2018. Remember? Oh, shit. You yeah. missed doing them? Yeah, absolutely. I missed the team. Um, you know, it's super fun working with the group. And I really like public speaking. I always have. Uh, so I missed that aspect of it. I thought I was good at it, so that's always nice. Um, you like public speaking, but you went to school to be a clown. No, not a clown. Not a clown. <laughs> <laughs> you were, you were, you were, That's where they put him there. Just like, you can only be a clown. Yeah, yeah. I, did not, you, but you, I did not you were like attend a, clown college. Gymnastic. <laughs> yeah. oh, wait, you didn't? Acrobatics. Acrobatics, yeah. okay. Well, I remember I was at the... Um, and music music before that. So. The <laughs> level, the first level one at South Brooklyn, Dave Osorio. Mm-hmm. Shout out, Dave. 2008, eight, nine. Nine. Coach Glassman yep. showed up. Okay. Derailed personal, the entire weekend. Our I think, personal shaman. I think Pat was there, too. Sherwood was there. Osorio, EC was personal. there. <laughs> Rob Miller was there. Um, we yeah. went out to dinner with Coach Glassman after. Mm-hmm. Um, At but that I, crazy Italian place? Yeah, but those huge meatballs. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. And... But I remember, like, this oh, is, like, man. kind of the peak behind the curtains back then. It was kind of like, what do you want to do? Like, there was the GHD lecture, and then all of a sudden, Boz is demonstrating an L-sit into a handstand. I, you, you remember doing that in yeah, front of the group there? I do. You, yeah. you, you, can you still do that? I could do that right now. That's amazing. Do we want? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I feel like that was, a, like, an opportunity. <laughs> I have, like, two things that I can still do. What's that? that? You still got two that, party what's tricks? What's the other? Oh, man, now you called me out. What's the other one? I could probably still do a standing back tuck that would be technically clean. You, you would know? land it. Okay. You'd stick no, it. No, no, and it would, like, look good and be good, you know. But what I wanted to ask about seminars is I think I see this a lot, and it goes back to what you said about people having a voice on the Internet. The level one is not enough to open a gym. I don't know about that. I think, right, that, that, I, think I don't agree I don't, with it, but that's, I don't think you need anything to open a gym. You don't I mean, technically. And that's always my argument. Like, and nor should you, in my opinion, this is, I reject this idea wholeheartedly that people, and this is not, has nothing to do with the level one. I believe that like you have a couple kettlebells and you're an enthusiast about it. And you want to open a gym. You should do it. So you're making the statement agnostic of methodology. A hundred percent. Fitness is not so precious and the human body is not so delicate that you need, you know, so many different governing bodies to tell you that, yes, you are qualified to teach somebody to exercise. That is ludicrous, in my opinion. Uh, I, I do not agree with that at all. And, I mean, you practice martial arts. That's what is, a great 
Yeah. What point. is the governing body there? I mean, you could sign your 10-year-old up today to go get hit in the head doing co- uh, Taekwondo or whatever. And, like, is there anything there that is mandated from anybody? No. no I mean, maybe the specific martial art itself has its own kind of way that it polices that. Maybe not. It's like but CrossFit. Cream rises to the top. I mean, uh-huh. you slap a Gracie on there. You slap a, you know, sure. another name on there. It helps. But even those, you don't yeah. know... Did that guy truly go through the, the Gracie yeah. system? Is he a true black right. belt? Now, is, does does that mean that there aren't people out there that can cause harm? Of, of course. course there are. There's plenty of people that, you know, could be too aggressive in the way that they're coaching or, you know, not going to uh, have people's best interests in mind or not understand how to progress somebody from a beginner to to being comfortable with this. But at the end of the day, the idea that it takes some sort of specialty knowledge to move your body in basic ways, I completely reject that. So, no, I don't think that you need a ton of stuff to open a gym. People should be able to open a gym right now. Um, well, as far as CrossFit is concerned, like, are you dealing with intensity? And does that intensity increase uh, your need to do things well? Of course. It's like if I'm going to take my car around the block at 10 miles an hour, I mean, yeah, you could probably get your teenager in there with no experience and you're going to be okay. You crank that up to 100 and you say, take the wheel. Well, the margin of error decreases. Sure. Same thing if you're dealing with a lot of intensity. And so, yeah, people need to go into it with the right progression in mind. Um, but it's, it's a weird gap to say, I'm going to just start at this point where I know how to do that. Like, what does is, what is that skill progression look like? And it's true for anything. You don't just get to the end state without going through the process and coming out the other end, learning some things and refining the way that you thought about it initially and, and ending up at a place that's maybe a little bit different than where you started. And that's well, fine. Well, I don't know anybody that, like, well, st- specifically with regard to CrossFit, that I would consider like, you know, a, a really good gym owner, a really good coach that if we were just rewind happened. back 10 yeah. years and I was like, yeah, that was, they're, they're the exact same person. Sure. I mean, I started in yeah. Sherwood's gym in 2008 mm-hmm. and... You know, like uh, he's held true to a lot of things, but I mean, I I don't think he would disagree if he if we were to go back and be like, how was that run? I I, I f- would find it shocking if he would be like, nope, it was perfect. So like we did everything perfectly. I definitely maybe got rabdo in CrossFit Virginia Beach. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think has kept the people like Fern, myself, you true to CrossFit versus people that get pulled in other directions? Um, I don't know, just the interest. Like, I think what you're interested in is uh, is a big part of that. I don't fault anybody for finding some other thing that captures their interest for that time that they're in. That's fine. I think it happens regularly. You know, you start with a big, broad exposure to things, and then you fall in love with weightlifting, or you're like, oh, man, powerlifting is really where it's at, or, or I want to do triathlons or whatever. Like, there's a million different ways that that goes. I think the difference is when somebody takes their own experience and what they are that interested in and then try to project that on everybody else. It's like, I am a weightlifter, ergo, everybody else should be doing that. And if they're not, there's a problem. It's like, well, that's where I start. Yeah, this thing is now broken because I found another thing that I like. Yeah. Yeah. And and the older I get and the more that, like, I've been physical for a long time. And your interest in things is always going to ebb and flow. You're always going to have times where you're really fired up to train. Um or certain things are going to fire you up to train and other things you're not going to be so interested in. That's always going to happen. And, you know, if the goal is to engage physically for the entire lifespan, expect that. But don't fall into the trap of thinking, because my pet interest has changed somehow, everybody else's should follow. And if they don't, they're wrong. That, that I yeah. think, is where you get... Yeah. I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. So yeah. we went to when, uh, we went to Onnit. And okay. Onnit's clubs, maces, kettlebells. Yeah, yeah. And... I have been playing around a lot more with kettlebells and I found yeah. a ton of value with it, but I'm not going to take that and be like, CrossFit needs more kettlebells. I'm only kettlebell. Yeah, guy only now. kettlebell. Yeah. We should never press a barbell <laughs> overhead. Um, right. And what, what I've, what I've found it to be very useful is to enhance CrossFit, but I'm not changing the way I program. I use sure. it a lot more in like warm, warm ups. Up. I use it a lot yeah. more in just like workouts that are not doused with intensity that are more like a flows, I guess would probably be like a good example, but well, that's what I'm John still going us to John yeah, Wolf. Yeah. I'm still going back it, to, yeah. I'm still going back to the basics of CrossFit couplets, mm-hmm. triplets, because I mean, it it works. Well, yeah. And, and I guess again, what do you want out of your fitness? That's the question. I mean, I have, 
I guess for me, I don't know what you guys are drawn to because I'm not you, I'm not in your headspace, but for me, it's always been the very pragmatic reality of it. It's like I never want to be in a situation where I'm like, I can't do that because I'm not physically capable. Right. And it, it, I like the extreme outlier case, I'm like, fine, I'll never be a 600-pound deadlifter. I don't care to be that. And so, yeah, if there's a boulder in my path and I'm not, you know, the tippy top of the strength curve to be able to move that, I accept that. But, you know, I never want to be in a position where, Fern, you're like, hey, man, I'm doing this really awesome surf trip. Do you want to come? And I'm like, dude, I don't know if I can keep up. Like, I never want to be in that position. You know what I mean? I never want to be in the position where it's like, I'm going to build a fire pit in my backyard. I don't know if I can bring the stones that they drop off on my driveway into the backyard to do this thing to improve my life. Like, I never want that to be even a question, you know? So because my end is just application in the general sense, like I never want to go to the jujitsu gym and gas out, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like it's, that should be a non-factor. I've trained enough that that's not a big deal. It is a different type of Comedic ball conditioning. Oh, 100%. But, right? but I never I never come away from a sparring session and I'm just like, oh my God, I couldn't right. do it. You're not my the conditioning. guy taking rounds. Yeah, my conditioning yeah. was the limit. People exactly. take rounds yeah. off. Like yeah. if you're going to oh, open really? mat. Oh yeah, all the time. Sure. And you want to be able to just roll for an hour. And I'm like, I'm not... I'm not all that in jiu-jitsu, but, but you know what I mean? But, like, the physicality of it is never non, a It's question. a non-issue. Yeah, You're like, exactly. no, I can do that. I'm not great at the yeah. technical side of this yet, or obviously I think you're pr- probably pretty good at it. But yeah, no, and I so get that well-roundedness is that's the whole jam for me. Um, I agree with that. Like, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm going to swim the Boston Frogman in June, and I haven't been in the pool in a while, say, but, I'm not, start, but, I'm not freaking out, but I'm not freaking out yeah. about it. Like, yeah. I've, I've got some swimming background. I am still fairly fit. Am I going to get in the pool beforehand? For sure. But at no point was I ever getting into that event thinking, like, I don't know if I'm going to finish the swim. Yeah. Like, I might yeah. just be a little bit slower than I was anticipating. I'm going to say right now, you'll finish. Zero percent you get in the pool beforehand. Oh, you're going to lose that bet. There's no... You, this is you. I'll do it next week. I'll do. It'll be like June eleventh. Wow. And that'll be. Out. That'll technically still be. You'll before be in a hot though. tub. Oh. You'll be in a hot tub, and you'll be like. <laughs> What's the define, yeah, define the pool? Count? No, yeah, define he's pool. Win, I mean, does the win. cold plunge at the gym count? <laughs> Can I swim back backstroke Look, in there? Fern will finish. I have no doubt about that, but I do have a doubt that he'll train for it. Yeah. Oh, I never said I was going to train for it. I will get back in the pool and swim a couple times prior to <laughs> yeah. prior to doing the two mile swim. But uh, anyway, so I guess you know, like there's <laughs> bring plen- us real us back in. Yeah, there's <laughs> plenty of ways to train where you're going to have overflow to quote unquote real life. I mean, there's plenty of ways to do that. A kettlebell is a great example. You know, any sort of real world strength and or conditioning is going to have bleed over into real life to some degree. How much is the question, you know? And so if I am only a weightlifter, yeah, certainly it's going to improve many things that I'm going to encounter outside the gym. But how broad is that spectrum? That's the question, you know? And for me, I just want that to be really broad. On that note, what does your training look like? Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I train at the local affiliate here. Shout out CrossFit East Nashville. And then um, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Friday afternoon, train jiu-jitsu. And then if my schedule gets hairy and I can't make it to the uh, affiliate, then I'll train in the garage. Um, you know, weekends, I'll usually do something in the garage that's just kind of mellow. But, yeah, that's, that's a typical So you're still week. going three days at intensity. Yep. Potentially a fourth. Yep. Or, and jujitsu in there. And that's all it takes. I mean, for what I want and what I need out of it, absolutely. I mean, yeah. Still feeling yeah. pretty fit? Yeah. I mean, yeah. the fittest ever that I've been? No. But When was that? Man, um, probably 2008 or nine. But Before you came into bigger roles with CrossFit. Sure, yeah. yeah. Um, traveling three out of seven days a week for a decade is not. Yeah. Head to head. Best <laughs> head to head, who wins, you or Rory? <laughs> right now? Probably Roe. Uh, he he's he looks like phenomenal a beast. Shape. We're supposed yeah, to see right him. Now. We'll yeah. see Thursday, him on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. yeah he. Uh, I mean, he's been training hard. What's it, what's he training for? He just I did a last life, one. bro. Life. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, he, well, he's training that's, 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 No, that's, that's actually a perfect example. So he's been you do a ton of training in the affiliate, but he just did his hunt his century ride. Yep. And then he's just in the mountains. That's right. Doing a bunch yep. of skiing. Bucket like I don't I don't think he trained a ton for those specific events. He's just fit. Yeah, I think he did start skewing his training more towards endurance, knowing that those were coming up. But yeah, I mean, he's he's a, he's a hardcore five a.m. class guy at Mayhem. Yeah, I mean, that's what he does. So he's just still going to class. Oh yeah, I yeah. mean, look at that, yeah. Rory, you, I mean, us. That's what it's all about. Yeah. What what? Seeing your 
garage gym. Well, hold on, hold on. Let me go back. So, like, yeah, that was the fittest I've ever oh. been. But what I think is interesting is I'm 38. Yeah, 38. And, yes, I was the fittest I've ever been probably when I was, like, 25, 26. Sure. Makes sense. Shocker. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. <laughs> but the difference between then and now it's not that significant. And you know also, what I mean? Like, you could definitely point to some things where it's like, yep, that was better. But it's ballpark. And you, you could know? get there again probably If, with if I effort. cared to push it, right. I have and, no doubt. Yeah. And your nutrition. But I assume yeah. you're pretty dialed in. You yeah, say that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. But Did you finish 75 hard? I got 70. 70 hard. <sighs> Why? What happened on the last? Because I didn't care enough. The, uh, the, um, the utility of it to me was not like... I mean, I get it. These guys are... Well, I posted something about like... 75 hard is what good CrossFits teach every day. Uh, no, I disagree. It's, it's, <laughs> I think it's, it's way more of a strict routine. It's um, rigid. But if you're, yeah. if you're at a good coach, you're talking nutrition. No, but I, I, the building blocks, yes, but like that as a specific thing is very hard line. So what, what, was a, what was one takeaway you had and what was one thing you were like, ah, that's not great. Oh, I got lots. Um, I like to do something every day. That's a, that's a good takeaway. I want to continue doing that. And did the outdoor. Getting outside regularly was great. I would love to continue doing that. Um, reading every day, like I like to read, uh, but I would kind of go through fits and starts. So getting back in the habit of making it a daily practice was great. Um, I'll never drink a gallon of water every day. It's for my like I just not necessary. For Were you me. doing it though during the seventy? Had to, yeah. So okay, That's, yeah. So that was a That's change so much water. you made. Yeah, uh, but I won't continue that. Like it's just dumb for me. <laughs> All I'm doing is just like as a chore, drinking and going pee. Like it did not right. help me in any way. I'm actually concerned about Jay. I think I have to pee a little bit right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that wasn't useful. Um, what else? I like to work, do something every day. That was good. The outside time, the reading. Water is dumb. You probably didn't have oh. any cheat meals where you might Correct. have normally yeah. or uh, drinks. That I don't eat enough, so that was a good learning. Like my, you know, you're supposed to pick a diet, and my diet, I just had a threshold for protein and carbs for the day. Like EC's lazy macros type of thing. I don't know what that yeah, is, but what probably. She does, yeah. Um, you know EC, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, I don't live on the internet as much, uh, and so it's hard to. Keep how up with how that stuff. deficient were you f- as far as eating? Because you said you don't eat enough. Well, so I fall into the habit of, um, like, I'm, I'm good about getting up in the morning, eating breakfast, and then I'll get busy with my day, and it'll be 7, 8 o'clock at night, and I'm right. like, well, I guess I should eat again. Yeah. So I just don't eat enough. Um, I do the same the, thing. That's pretty much my exact pattern. That's the opposite of you guys. So, I eat too much, yeah. I think. I was going to want to talk to you about that. <laughs> but <laughs> shirt's looking tight. But so getting into the <laughs> practice of eating enough was really useful, uh, so I want to carry that forward. Um, I'm never going to be in a state where I don't drink. Uh, I think that... Like My a state, life. like in the United States, now that you're a citizen, yeah. you mean? Or like state both. of mind? Yes, <laughs> state, both. Uh, we, we, didn't, we didn't, we asked a little bit about that. You are officially a U.S. Yeah, since 2017. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty, yeah. that's a big deal. Yeah. That's awesome. America. You got the you helmet hate, right there. You hate Canada, you said mm-hmm. earlier? Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. Yes. <laughs> Terrible place. Can I would recommend it. Yeah. Can you sing the no, Canadian not. national anthem? I can, but will I know? Okay. <laughs> I think it's great. I think, I think it's, I'm going to get, I don't want to get canceled, but I think it's one of the, Great national anthems. I always love yeah. hearing "Oh Canada." North, strong and free, yeah, man. yeah. It's a, it's a good song. That and the Russian one. I like the Russian one oh only because Nikolai Volkov back in the eighties used to sing it. Remember wrestling? Anybody? Yeah, from WWE F at the time. Yeah. F at the time. Yeah. So, so you learned a little bit from it. Yeah. It was a good. T- you, you would you recommend it or? I. Uh, it's fun to go through periods of time where you have a hard discipline. I, I have I done that, that off and on for decades. And I don't think it's a good way to structure your life. Um, like getting back to the, like my last takeaway was like, I enjoy a drink every once in a while. I do not ha- I don't have a problem with drinking. Some people do in that case, fine. I can see, you know, yeah, you shouldn't do it. But for me, it makes my life objectively better. It is. And you're very nice good at to it. Do. I will. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're very good at drinking. Yeah, you never, yeah. I mean, weekends with bars, games, like, yeah, every once in a while, yeah. I'll have a drink or two, and that's it. And I don't – so it was not hard to not drink. I was just in many situations where I was like, this this would be nice to have a cocktail, and I think it makes my life objectively better. What's your go-to cocktail? Manhattan. Yeah. Or a Negroni. Is it, what's a Negroni? It's uh, equal parts gin, vermouth, and Campari. Yeah, I don't, I don't love gin. What do you, what's the drink you always get? Old you fashioned. Old fashioned. So yeah. What's the difference between an old fashioned and a Manhattan? Manhattan is less sweet. It's just uh, whiskey, vermouth, and bitters. And what's the old fashioned? 
it uh the um it's got simple syrup it, yeah, yeah the it. syrup in it and you get your smoked sometimes oh uh, you can it's get fancy. them smoked i was yeah, with fernie great. we had like eight of them then we got into a big fight over uber <laughs> 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 yeah see I'm, it was the old fashioned yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the old fashioned chuck, this chuck, is the old chuck fashioned rubbed, chuck rubbed oh, chuck, chuck, he, he rubbed yeah. off one on ice me. cube like, one ice cube like chuck does preferably yeah preferably you know, What's your favorite cube or cube or the uh, little ice spheres? But yeah, you spent a lot of time with Chuck Carswell, good I friend have. of the show. What's yes. your favorite Chuck moment? Oh, I can't tell them on air. Um, <laughs> I, PG version, <laughs> PG thirteen, maybe. Oh man, uh, favorite one of the first times Chuck and I ever met, two thousand seven or eight. We were driving around in Brunswick, Georgia, and it was the first time that I'd ever been in the South, and it was like a million degrees and a thousand percent humidity. I was not prepared for any of that. <laughs> and uh, we were driving around looking for this barbecue place and I didn't know Chuck that well and we were just cruising around and we ended up at this place called Drake's. I can still see it like vividly in my mind and it was like this rundown shack and Chuck's kind of looking like, I don't know if this is the place to be and naive Canadian man, I'm like, this is great. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and there was no joke, a one-eyed cat on the porch. Like it had bad sign written all over it, you know? And um Anyway, they, long story short, there were clothes we did not go to Drake's, but that was that was a fun experience. Oh, Chuck Carr as well. Yeah. What I've, it, got, what? I've got, I've got, yeah, I got lots of Chuck stories. What he's is it best. about Chuck that people just love? He's he's just a good, friendly human and being. Open a good human being. And yeah, I mean, what's not to love? Yeah, it's, he's like everything that you would. I mean, that I he, should be. Yes, he is everything <laughs> that you should be. Yeah, no, way you off. Be you. Yeah. you be you. You be you, Chuck. Um, my favorite well, amongst many. We were working a seminar in New Jersey. And it was me, Chuck, and Joey Dill. And it was like, okay. I got a Joey Dill story. <laughs> we'll hear that. And Joey's a great dude. And yes. we were like, all right, it's 9 o'clock. Joey and I were looking at each other. I was like, it's 10 o'clock. We're looking at each other. We're like, it's 4 o'clock in the morning, Chuck. <laughs> we need to go to bed. Like, yes. we need to. We're like, I don't drink this much. Like, I'm wasted. It's, we have to get up in an hour. Oh. That's classic Chuck because he doesn't. That doesn't mess him up. Well, I don't. He just, he just wears. Kind of he just wears it well. He wears it well. Mine was similar though. This uh, this is the first time Lindsay and I met, but we were in a, we were working a seminar in Miami. Lindsay and Chuck is a devastating duo. Well, I didn't help. I didn't add. To, I added to the mix, but the uh, we were in. I think it was in Hylia Garden. Was the where the seminar was? Miami. You said Miami. Yeah, Miami. Yeah. It was the last seminar of the year, and we're in Miami, so we're in like <laughs> right Chuck's, around Christmas. Yeah, yeah, we're in Chuck's like you know backyard down there. So we go to dinner, everything's great, and I, I might have been on staff like three months. Super green. So Lindsay's new as well then. She's, yeah, a little bit more senior than me, but like both have been hired that year. So it's like we get back to the hotel and everybody, we get into the lobby and we everybody kind of breaks and goes their own separate directions to go back to their room and Chuck kind of standing in the lobby where the door is and he just, he kind of yells out to the group and he goes, if you guys go out with me, I'm going to be really pissed. <laughs> so and I was like, Everybody just kind of looked at each other, and then there was just a collective decision, like we'll rendezvous back down here in twenty minutes, <laughs> yeah. and then it just and then it just Jeez. spiraled out That's of control. Worst, yeah. yeah. What's your Joey Jill story? Um, I don't know if Joey remembers this. This was when he was pretty new on staff. When he was on staff, uh, he was like seventeen. He was he's like 12. young. Yeah. yeah. Oh boy, we were in New York. I don't remember the gym. Oh, it was kind of basement, neon green. That's all I remember. But uh, it was myself, Joey. I think Jen Hunter Marshall was there. Keith Wittenstein was definitely there. Uh, and came time to do the lunchtime workout. And I can't remember who came up with the workout, but it was rowing, uh, power snatch, rowing, full snatch, rowing, overhead squat. It was like 500 meter rows and then, I don't know, 15 or 20 reps with like a 95 pound bar. And Joey, CrossFit. yeah, great, great workout. Joey at the time was, you know, he's a young fit man. And so he's like, hey, I don't think it's going to be hard enough. Uh, I should do 135 <laughs> pounds on the barbell. And I said, no, Joey, you need to hold a 140 or less rowing pace. And he was not happy about that. <laughs> he's like, no, I want to do the barbell. I was like, no, well, this is. It's right. That's how you make this workout harder. It's not about making it heavier. Anyway, that's my Joey Dill story. It's, it's very, but that's yeah. the truth about cross. People always nobody wanna, wants to do that, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want you to go faster. Be like, oh, that sounds uncomfortable. Uh, yeah. On that note, have you ever been at the games and seen someone do something like that? That that's clearly dumb. Looking at the rest of the workout, like 
You know, so for uh, example, what was it last year? Kick, the last workout kicked off with like a 1K or something. Remember you know, that? These days, everybody's pretty it's well pretty versed in that kind of stuff, about, especially at that stage. What about 8, 9, 10? When well, you were, I will say that, you know, there's people that will come after an event and say, oh, I came out too hot. Maybe that's true. Maybe they just didn't perform as well as they wanted to. Um, but th- like somebody coming out completely oblivious and just putting the hammer down when they shouldn't. No, you don't see that too much anymore. You still see it in the level ones, though. But that's, sure, and that's yeah. a lost art. I think too many people see the games athletes They're, and pace. I agree. It's too reserved. And, and yeah. Rich, I think yeah. I think I'll blame Froning on this, and we can talk about it when we see him. We'll talk to his face. He just he <laughs> always moves smoothly. Well, and and it's like jujitsu, right? People move very smoothly. I'm not good enough to move at that pace, so I have to come at you. And it's the same with CrossFit. Like, if you always pace, you always pace. Go unbroken, see what happens. Well, I think there's a difference, too, between winning the workout and best training effect. And most people lose that somewhere along the way, unfortunately. You know, there is very much a time in your training that you got to put the hammer down and put yourself there. Um, You know, yeah, if you're competing and it's on the line and what matters at the end of the day is the time on the scoreboard – Fine, then yeah, you got to pick a pace that suits you the best and is going to give you the best advantage. But those are not the same things at all. No. And right. I think what happens is people look at that competitive outlet and they transpose it onto training, and then all of the training starts to reflect competitive mode. And I think that's a big mistake. When, when Fern and I got on staff, you were like an OG, an old guard, a veteran. Really? At, are, yeah, already? you were definitely a when, flow when, master. When did, you, when did you officially... Start doing seminars. Uh, first time I ever got paid to show up was in 2007. I like that first, answer. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't my first seminar. First <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Further, you got paid to so, show up. So, I mean, yeah. you had a so, five year head start on us. You were up six. there. Six. I mean, I was 2013. Well, I want to hear about, like, this would be a great, like, sitcom, Young Boz. <laughs> Oh boy. Like, well, what, oh boy. like we only because we only see you from yeah. the perspective of you're the one providing us feedback. We talk yeah. about it a lot on the show. Feedback is a huge part of the seminar oh, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What were some of the feedback pieces you got early on? <laughs> oh man, it was uh, one of the first seminars that I ever did where I had some responsibility. Uh, this was late. I think it was late 2007 or very early 2008. It was at CrossFit North Santa Cruz, um, which doesn't That's exist it. anymore. I was going to say, was that Annie's? No, oh. it was uh, at the time, I think it was Brandon Gilliam. Oh, and Allison. Allison. Oh, yes, and Allison. Yeah. No, I don't think she Oh, no, no, because she was on the East Coast. But, yeah. but th- that's who, they're married now. Yes, yeah, but yeah. no, she was, she, this was before her before time. Before Allison uh, NYC. Yep. Uh, oh, man, Ronnie Boos, I think, was part of that. A couple other old schoolers. But anyway, that doesn't matter so much. Um, Great gym. It was it was kind of one of the first satellites that was purpose built for CrossFit, which is very cool. We started doing seminars there. Um, I had a couple under my belt at that point where I'd kind of interned, and you know, this one I got fed a little bit of responsibility as we all. Which was did. what? Um, I had lecture? to teach a couple of the groups. Uh, like the I honestly like the, I don't like remember. the actual like the actual breakout groups yeah. or the large groups. Uh, both, so yeah, yeah, small okay. groups and and large groups. I don't remember if I lectured at that or not. It's been a while, um, but at the end of the day, my some of my favorite feedback ever is you know Dave and I had just started interacting because of my you know internship on the staff, and um, I had taught something. It finished. Dave called the group back together. He was kind of leading the show. It's like early flow master days, and um, I thought I'd done an amazing job with whatever it was that I had just done. And in front of the group, he just looks at me and he just goes, don't ever do that again. And I was like, oh. <laughs> in front <laughs> of the participants? No, 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 no. Oh, like he called the, the, red the shirts, staff back right, together. The, the, yeah. yeah. And uh, I was all like, oh, man, I nailed that Crushed. one. And he's just like. <laughs> what was he referring to? I don't remember. I was, <laughs> I, I, again, it doesn't matter. That, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the point is that my perception and what needed to happen were not the same thing. And he brought me back to that reality. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I got it. But I again, like, you that know, up. that's always something we talk about feedback. I mean, that might not have been the best version of feedback. <laughs> I don't know. It was pretty effective. But, at the time. <laughs> but, but, uh, <laughs> but you were receptive. You were receptive to it. Yeah. It, yes. Willing to at least take pause and say, oh, hold on a second. What I thought and what was 
seen from the external point of view was different. Let's see if we can match those up next time. I also think that's a lost art, which is just foregoing all of the fluff with regard to the feedback was like, well, how do I make sure that this person doesn't feel bad about it? Which is just like, if it was bad, say it was bad. It doesn't mean they're a bad person. It doesn't mean you're mad, but we're not going to mince words about like, this was ineffective. Don't do that again. Yeah. I don't know. I think that again, I'll, you know, Canadian roots. I, (laughs) I do think that there is a place for a diplomatic touch. Um, but that's not what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do think you got to be straight with people. I think, I think as we, it's, you know, I think like CrossFit, we were we were kind of reminiscing. Cabo and I worked as level two this yeah. past weekend, and we were reminiscing about the old the feedback in yeah. the old level two days, which is pretty harsh, shall we yeah. say? Oh, no joke. You know, and I think yeah. to some degree we don't want to lose all of that. Agreed. But yeah, yeah. No, but it, it, but it, it does need to be tapered a little bit, which is like yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. I do think that again, maybe this kind of circles back to my point about internet breeding entitlement. I I do think that. People are pretty soft, as I guess. A I was going to say, exact word. I was a simple way to put it. And maybe that's a little too simplistic, but yeah, people are pretty guarded about that sort of thing. They really, and I get it. Like you're wrapped up in what you do, and if you care about what you're doing, when somebody tells you it's not great, that's going to sting. Sure, but there's a lot worse things in the world than somebody saying, "Hey, maybe you could do this differently," or "Hey, maybe that wasn't up to standard." You know? Yeah, but I think the sting is actually what's valuable in some instances. Like if you really, if you really do care about it, I don't think it's necessary, but it's not necessary all the time, but I definitely think it can be, which is like, if you really care about it and it does sting, you know, I think about like, I've gotten some pretty harsh feedback over the years. And like, I was like, well, I'm never doing that again. Like I'm going to fix that. I I don't ever want to feel like that again. And I think that's important. And I think sometimes I know I've let people down like that. I've either like been on teams with where like I've, by trying to be soft and trying to navigate them, I wasn't doing them any favors. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, I've definitely uh, fallen victim to that myself where I'm too, too sh- not sugarcoating, but trying to round the edges a little bit too much and then it's just not delivered in a way that's useful. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's an interesting time in the CrossFit space right now and um, coming up to a point where there's been a lot of business development folks in the space. But what's important about what we do is we are for CrossFit, by CrossFitters, and what we do is we develop affiliates. I think I've told you guys this in the past as well, is like knowing what I know now and knowing that where we're at versus where we were at, I would have paid double. And what's unique about what we do is A, we love this, we live this, and there's nothing that we would rather do. Um, Other cool stuff, it is worth CEUs for you and your coaching staff, Um, but outside of that, the goal for us is to get you to the next level as a CrossFit affiliate owner. Uh, there's a point with box ownership that you can kind of start to begin to feel like you're spinning your wheels and burning out. And uh, by joining Affiliate U, it's only helped create that happiness that I used to know and love in here. And it's trickled down even to our members as well. So it's very, very rewarding to see the enjoyment on everybody's face. We're here to help you do that. If you guys have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. We're here for you. We know the anxiety involved with running an affiliate, getting burnt out, having somebody else selling you a product that you don't actually want to buy. Um, that's not what we're about, okay? We are selling straight stick CrossFit. We are supported by CrossFit. First and only CrossFit approved affiliate development in the space. Hit us up, we'd love to work with you. Let's talk a little bit about your new role. Yeah. Easy, Not that new. It's uh, I mean, easy, easy gig though. Yeah. No stress. <laughs> nobody, no public scrutiny. No, uh, nobody, no nobody feedback really whatsoever. Not yeah. new. Yeah. The newest change for 2022 is that you'll be doing and have been doing absorbing, all of the, the program, <laughs> absorbing what? a lot of what Dave was doing in the yeah, past. Yeah. yeah. And, and getting ready for the season you were saying earlier. Yeah. I don't know if you wanted to talk about it on the show. No, that's fine. But would you talk about your process you were mentioning or is that too, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, it's where to start. Um, the hopper. So you're just pulling these things out. Just, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's right behind It's me. random. It's, it's random. It's just, just out of shot. And, uh, random no, not buried. Random that's not buried. Yeah. I, I mean, it's really a lot of it. 
I worked with Dave for 15 years and, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of rub off there. Um, you know, I think he and I, have you're going to do cornrows this year. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I'm growing it out. I, he and I, I think are very similar in a lot of ways, uh, as far as our mindset is concerned. We're obviously very different people, but, uh, mindset wise and mentality around what the test should be. I think we're very much in alignment in, in that way. Um, and you know, it was one of the best parts about the year was, four years I would get kind of sneak peeks at things that he was thinking about he would bounce ideas off of me I would tell him that they were great or like hey I think this might be a bad idea or whatever you, you know and can you think of one where he gave you something and you're like I don't think so there were, yeah I mean yes I don't want to I don't want to say I almost put it out but no, uh, bring handstand push-ups I don't, I don't want to, uh, should we talk about this? I don't know. what's the worst thing that could happen like you come back off the this floor class can I tell a story about Boz uh, I forget who it was I want to yeah. say Nick Tomlinson I, 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 was it I, Nick yes uh, I remember we're this in the back. we're in the back in Carson <laughs> the room no is about this happen. size <laughs> it's about this size but yeah. 30 to 40 of us I'll tell you guys a story after this Roz is briefing the strict handstand push-ups and Nick's like no it's rings at the game ring hands up at the game. Nick yeah. Tomlinson, OG. Where's he Carson. based out of California? Temecula. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great dude. Great. He's like, Boz, Boz, this, what about if this happens? And Boz's like, no chance. That's not going to happen. We get out there, we're like, hmm. Everybody's, Everybody's doing, doing that. that. <laughs> <laughs> Boz, in his, in his very <laughs> calm <laughs> demeanor, just like, listen, you guys are worried about things that are not just, Classic, it's not going to happen. I don't remember that. Don't happening. worry Classic about it. Bugs. We walked out there, there's a, there's, People just having anxiety attacks in the poop shoot, like watching this happen. Yeah, like there it is. Boy. That's hey. the thing. I was that was my the, my yeah. worst nightmare Nick, is unfolding. The salt shaker's here. <laughs> Move the salt shaker. <laughs> uh, I remember one year there was uh, oh, I was in the stadium, tennis stadium in Carson. There was a S- the slam ball box jump. That's the one. Yeah. Oh, oh where well, you oh. left us in the sh- in the <laughs> room by ourselves to think about our feelings for yeah, five hours. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't leaving you there. I was doing the work on the back end to resolve all the mistakes that were made. So there was a bunch of mistakes that were made that were, shouldn't have happened. It was very basic. Stuff. It was a fast. Whoever made the fast. mistakes, though, doesn't, we don't know. But it was, very it was fast. a fast event. Was, wow. We were literally like here, and the other athlete was right behind you. It was very fast. It, well, it was a burpee box jump, right? I think it was. Or is it just a box jump over? It was just a box jump over. People the, get screwed the up sandbags. on that count. Well, sandbags. let me tell you, I was not happy with the way that that event went down. I was not happy that I had to uh, you know, do a lot of legwork to resolve things that uh, – you know, shouldn't have been issues in the first place. You guys were left on ice in the room for like for a, literally a three, really four long hours. Time. It was not yeah, Friday three or four night. Hours. You guys it wasn't it. even In and Out Burger night, so we're just uh, like sitting back there. <laughs> That's yeah. not at all the way that that went down. <laughs> number one, it was not three to four hours, and number two, I come oh. back, I was mad at all of you oh, guys. Oh yeah, you were. I've no, I've and seen you, you were, mad once, and you were sitting it. there, and you were all eating burgers. Oh, I wasn't was In like, and Out Burger night? Was, I was that wrong? Like, WTF? Okay. I'm out here cleaning up you guys' mess, and you guys are having a burger party. I was so mad. It was, uh, uh, well, was I that think the, one of the we only were, times you've it, been angry? It no. wasn't three or four hours. It, it wasn't three. Or, it wasn't three or four <laughs> that hours. Was, that was definitely. It felt yeah. long. It felt. It long. was definitely a long time because we, we knew something was happening. I think we left there like around like it was definitely wasn't three or four hours, okay. but we left there like around nine p.m. That night. And I think I don't think the original idea was to get. <laughs> to have a burger party. No, some, <laughs> I think we all knew we had kind of fucked up. Somebody always spoils but, the judges on Saturday night. No, but I think the point, burgers, I yeah. think the reason that happened was because we, we were there late and I, I it was, it might have been Courtney. She's like, we need to feed them. I yeah. think, I think was the decision I that was made. I disagreed, but. Uh, <laughs> we need to get them fast food immediately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the good old days. Who <laughs> is responsible for the snacks? Courtney, right? Uh, it. I mean, team effort, but yeah, yeah. she, she definitely. I always tell people like first. they're like oh like judging the games is, is I'm like it's an experiment. Like we're gonna <laughs> yeah. we're gonna exhaust these guys, especially the year we flew to oh, the Aromas. Yeah. Well, hey, we're not gonna yeah. let them sleep for a day. Then we're gonna just feed them sugar. Yeah. We're gonna put them in That's a high stress choice. scenario. That's I don't need this. I never dig into the peanut M and M's. That is your choice. Then we're gonna put them in a high stress situation, and we'll see what happens. We we'll watch them come out on top. Yeah, yeah. 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 In- inevitably, job. one or two people melt down. <laughs> Over the course of the, of the weekend. <laughs> it's a it's a pressure cooker. I mean, I, I joke about that and have for years that, you know, no matter what capacity you show up at the games, you're an athlete, you're a coach, volunteer, spectator, whatever, staff, by the end of the week, you are smashed. Like oh. It's just, it's a full-on event. Mentally um, exhausted. And uh, there's nothing like it, so. <laughs> no. <laughs> and you know what? It's one of those things. You you, gotta we always ready. joke. We show up on Monday ready. and I'm like, I'm going to wake up and it's going to be. Sunday night. Yep. Like, it's just going to happen. And then Sunday, you're like, okay, that was it last year. 
<laughs> and then like slowly as time goes by, you're like, oh, I'm kind of looking forward to yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's the other thing I say every year is like, man, I love the games week. It's, I mean, it's crazy stressful. There's no question about that. But I just am so glad I don't have to do it more than once <laughs> yeah. in once, a year. Right. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's a lot. This is the last year on the contract with Madison. Is that accurate? Um, I don't know. I don't feel comfortable talking about that okay. because it's not okay. my, that's not my job. Okay. Um, what year is it? Is this the fifth year? It's 2022. We, well, we were, you mean <laughs> like, wait, <laughs> I we, think we started in 2017 there. So, so this is year five, yeah, but then one year was off. So don't, we don't know. Yeah. So you're okay. not going to tell us where the next games is going to be. No. Is that what you're saying? I'm not, it's not my place to do that. Cool. So. All right. Uh, but we are going to release one of the games workout. That's yes, right. which yeah. one are we doing right, right now? now. We'll give it to you. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Um, <laughs> and it is... <laughs> would you ever do... Not the, We're not actually... On your do, podcast? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Very Not Random. Yeah, yeah. They will be talking about it. <laughs> they, they leak uh, all the workouts <laughs> elsewhere. Um, <laughs> would you ever do a classic girl workout again? Or have those become too easy for games athletes? Or no. is it like the Joey Deal thing? Like, <clears throat> Is there a point where it's like... Everybody would be so fast that we, it's not. It, it depends. I think that there are some that are absolutely. What's still a good test? Give me right, some that. Right for it. Yeah, well, which ones? Let me, let me get what I want out first. Fine. <laughs> the, I, I also think that if you look at, you know, classic sporting events outside of CrossFit, there's, there's obviously big games, NFL, you know, baseball, whatever, soccer. Um, but if you look at the sports that have been around since the dawn of time, I mean, Wrestling. Wrestling, foot race, picking something up and either carrying it or throwing it or just picking it off the ground. Like, that's it, right? Like, you got a basic weightlifting thing, you got some sort of foot race, and you got some sort of, like, combat thing. Those would have withstood the test of time everywhere, every civilization, find them all over the place. Those events are not compelling because of the thing itself sometimes. And I, I think running is the great, great example. 100 right. meter dash, probably the most popular spectator event at the Olympics every year, right? Why? Is it because it's physically difficult to run zero to 100 meters? Like, are you ever concerned that the athletes may not make the distance? <laughs> That's no. the challenge? No. Why do you watch that race? Because you want to see somebody tight. do it in an inhuman oh. Okay. Pace, you like that is so mind blowing that a human being can get from here to there in that time frame. That is insane. So there's a chance we can see something like Fran or Grace uh, or absolutely. Isabel. Absolutely, I, I, I think there are very, very good reasons to include those classic benchmarks to see what separates the best from the rest of us. Because we all do those things, and it doesn't look like that. <laughs> that also has to be tempered with the idea of, you know, you don't want somebody winning the race because they're better at something like a transition. You know, that's not, right. not really going to be a measure it's of a their test fitness of necessarily. Fitness. Yeah, exactly. And so you got to temper some of those things. But at the end of the day, I don't believe that the, the games has to have every single test be something that is so out of reach to the average person because they're capable of it. There should be some of that, absolutely, because that's what they that's need to stretch. That's typically in load. Them. Or, 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 I mean, there's a million the ways The ruck run was that. probably a great example, too, like sure, where the load yeah. got 50 or, pounds. Or, or volume it. or, or right. just the compounding skill set that's required to complete a particular event. Like there's a lot of different ways you can cook that to make an event that the average person just can't do it. But if that's the only test that's being given, you're missing the point because there's plenty of things that all of us could do that are still completely valid. And it's not because the thing itself is so dif difficult. It's how you take it and apply yourself to it and how fast you can get out the other end. That's the real separator. And, and I think... I th well, I think that's why people really like the games too, by the way, because there's always a subset of workouts that I would say a, a good swath of the CrossFit community could bite off on. Yeah, like, like I could do that, but I'm definitely bike. not going to do it like sure. that. What was it, assault bike snatch or thrust example, or was yeah, it? It's a snatch. 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 Yep. Like you're like, I can do that in yep. three times this. Exactly. Those guys right. are... Yeah. But I think Dave used to do that well, especially at the regional level back in the day. Every year was a classic. Yep. Nasty Girl. Yep. Right? We did, the net, we did uh, Amanda a couple times. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites, we did uh, Nate. Nate, I remember that? Yeah, that was, was a tricky strict. one. To, that was strict, right? Tricky one to judge, but it was it was a really cool event at regionals. Yeah, that was at regionals. What year was that? Twenty sixteen or seventeen? Okay. I think. yeah, there were strict muscle. I want to say strict muscle ups and yep. handstand push ups, mm -hmm. but that that was always part of it. He, he, I remember hearing him say, "Like, I want to, to show the world where we've gone with this yeah, fitness." Yeah, absolutely, and and I think. Um, there's a good case to be made cross-divisionally as well 
you know, if we are going to look at things objectively and say, not only do we have the collection of like the fittest people bar none, and that represents like the open division, but now we have all these master's divisions, we've got team divisions, we've got adaptive divisions. You know, if you have a test that applies to everybody across the board, that represents some really interesting data. You know, what does it look like to be a 65-year-old man who is very fit compared to somebody who's 25 and very fit? You know, like obviously you have those age divisions for a reason. There's going to be a <coughs> drop-off. There's a difference in physicality. But what is that? What is I don't know what that yeah, is. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's fascinating to look at things like that and say like, well, how, I think it's here but maybe it's only here. I tell you, I mean, we don't get to see a ton of it at the games, but the Masters, at the, like the, the evolution of the Masters yeah. competitors. Yeah, like that, still like right is, yeah, right yeah, yeah, right there, yeah. Yep. The, uh, the is, is He's the man. I love him. He's a freak I, show. Those, like, that's what I want to be. Like that. The yes. more I train, the more I look to, you know, the 55, 60, 65-year-olds, yeah. and I'm like, that's it. I mean, it's one thing to be 24 and an animal, but – no slight against anybody who's living that life. That's great. You should be. You're 24. You should be an You've got, you got no excuse. You right. know what I mean? Like what, yes, that should be in the mix. Maybe not like top of the heap, but yeah, you should be in pretty good shape. You're young. You don't have a lot of miles on you. Like, yeah, that should be a given. Stretch that out 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and you haven't fallen off. That's impressive. That's health. I mean, yeah. that's a uh, work vit- capacity vitality across. Vitality yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, yeah. work capacity across broad time model domains throughout years of yeah. your life. So, I think one thing that's shifted over the years. I want to hear your input at the games. Is the men's weight compared to the girls' weight? Mm. I feel like females in general have made more of an improvement over the years. Sure. And the old school ninety five sixty five isn't as relevant as it used to be. Yeah. How are you handling that? Um, how do, yeah, or I mean, how I, do you handle that? I think you always got to pay attention to what's possible with the field. And I would say that if you look at kind of the starting point for high-level men capac- men's capacity versus high-level women's capacity, the men had a head start. I mean, you look at historically Just because we all worked out uh, with weight. Sure, or even like way before any of us were born, like <clears> what was accepted as... True. common practice for men's sports versus women's sports it's obvious that like men had a head start in that and and so therefore it, there's more unknown as to what what does it look like to be top of the heap as a as a female athlete and so for that reason i think that they had a bigger gap of unknowns to start overcoming and now that we are further along that track you're like oh yeah it's maybe it's a little closer than initially it appeared cool you know so yeah you absolutely have to take that into consideration um and we do that you know with men and women, um, all athletes really every year. And it's like, all right, you're always trying to ride that line of what is pushing the bounds of what these guys can do versus what is still reasonable. Uh, and that's always going to be part of the game, right? Trying to find that tension and play with it. Yeah, it's at the point now where the women weights are too heavy for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> like when I they mean, were snatching 185, yeah. I'm like, yep, I can't. They're they're better than me now. It's a great example of just how fit these people are. I mean, you look at somebody like Tia, who is out of control. You know, just just an animal. In any every, any every female domain. at the games, really? Yeah, yeah sure. But, I mean, but she's the easy Tia, example. Yeah. But yeah, no. I mean, there's yeah, dozens of of women out, hundreds that are just ridiculous. And you look at and some of them, they're like 17, 18, 19. That's right. where I was going to go. That's, that's what I find even uh, probably even more impressive. Like seeing some of the younger female competitors right. on the floor last year was mind blowing. Yeah. yeah, it's nuts. It's yeah. Well. But you look at, you know, that, what was the open, second open workout with the uh, deadlift. deadlift and burpees. And you programmed that? Uh, no, that, that that was Dave. That was still Dave, okay. Yeah. Um, if you were to take that and load it up to the women's weights and say. Was hey, it just, 155 for the women? Just, it was take, just take a shot at the top times in the world. I'd be like, dude, like there's no way. <laughs> you just can't <laughs> move that close fast. close to that, you know. Yeah. Right. It's not even in the ballpark. Did um, you do any of the three workouts, the programming? No, um, I did not. Uh, you know, weighed in on the first. The first one was the only one that we changed out of Dave's original. Um, wall walk, box jump, was it dumbbell snatch? Yes. Yeah. So we modified that one a little bit, but yeah. The oh, yeah, I couldn't do set. that one. I yeah. just had surgery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. I had to skip that one. He opted out. He opted out of the open. I yeah. got a DNF. DNF. It happens. It happens. Life <laughs> gets in the way. Yeah. Do, do you think that these young girls that are, you know, 17, 18, making the games, what do you think the impact for them will be? You know, I think for men. What do you mean? Well, for men, we start training really young, and a lot of us do get beat up 
you know, I think women tend to peak later in CrossFit, and I attribute you some think? of that. You have like the Sam Briggs. I mean, great. Granted, she's an outlier. Yeah, I think I would. You would obviously know better, but, but I would I'm, say that might have been timing, though, like when she started. Well, that's my point. I think the average age of a female games athlete probably is a little higher than men. I don't know that to be true. I'm speculating, but I think part of it is. I feel like it's starting to come down. That's what I'm, I really do think it's starting to come down, but that was because originally, like, <clears throat> they had to gain all that strength and capacity because they didn't train with weights as much. Now they're starting at like 12, 30. I mean, who's that young? There's the Mal- Mallory O'Brien, yep. Emma Carey. I think she was injured this year. Yep. I don't know. Right? Yeah. But I mean, they're crazy strong, those two girls. Like, yeah. In absolutely. high school, probably, or maybe college. That's mm-hmm. like. So uh, do you think that will lead to them? Peaking earlier, potentially burning out. Uh, that's one of those impossible questions, and I think it comes I ask, down. I to, asked a lot of impossible questions. I, well, I think it comes down to the application, and you can see that in any sport where the competition is happening at a high level, there's going to be people that approach it as if every season is their last, and they're just going to put themselves through the fire no matter what, and grind themselves out. And, yeah, I don't know if that's a good path to longevity. That's a great point. And, yeah, like th- But there are other people that will engage with their training in a way that's a little bit more with the long view. They'll accept the fact that maybe this isn't the only year I have to compete, and it's okay to take a longer road to really get to my, my absolute uh, potential. And I think that those people, number one, they're smart to do that. And number two, obviously, they're going to have a little bit less of a bumpy road along the way, in my opinion. Um, so it's like anything else. Can you fall into something so hard that it grinds you out? Absolutely. You can do that with anything in life. There's no question. Are there ways to recognize that that's something that could happen and navigate around? Of course. Yeah. And that, that's where I think, you know, what you guys talk so much about coaching and coming back to the basics and making sure that you've got a good handle on what it is that you're trying to achieve is so huge. You know, if you have somebody who's just, taking the raw potential of somebody and saying how far and how fast can we ride this, it's not going to be a long ride. Yeah, know? I mean, you see that in a lot of sports. You see it yep. in baseball, yep. uh, basketball. I mean, like, it, yeah, I've seen many people, like, take somebody that had tremendous potential and then just burn that thing out. Sure. And you're like, man, yeah. like, that would have been cool to see them stretch yep. this out another 10 years. And I think a lot of coaches yeah. are starting to recognize that, and that's a big role, and I think will increasingly be a role of the coach for those athletes that, number one, have an insane work ethic and the drive to, to succeed and the talent and, and um, you know, I don't know. I think there's some people that just have a – they come into it with a natural preset that's going to allow success in, in a sport like CrossFit, you know, like body type, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, there's some physiological things there that, like, yeah, you kind of you, – sometimes you get a good roll of the dice. Great. Mm-hmm. And if you couple that with, like, insane drive and hard work and all that kind of stuff – the role of the coach is very much like, hey, let's pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. You know? Like you, you don't want to push them over that cliff because they are running towards it full speed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and your I've, job is to say, hold on a second. I've seen that quite a bit in the the weightlifting space with youth okay. where yep. um, coaches are trying to get their athletes to podium. And uh, like CJ Cummings is a perfect example of that. Like he regularly, if not always, goes six for six. And that's because his coaches, I don't, he's definitely not reserved, but they're always looking at that. Like we don't, if we, he's young, we don't yeah. need to, to yep. push the margin right now. We've got a lot of good years, yep. Yep. Um, stuff like that. So, and I think, I think that will change now at one point, the only way to make a living doing CrossFit was winning. We're now the payouts deeper sponsorships yeah. are more the ecosystems so, larger, right? So it's, yeah. it's easier to not make that to feel like I need to win this year, but I need to, if sure. you come in top 10, I mean, who Panchik, a lot of people have done it and made great careers off of that and well, never and I, winning and i think there's the, like the sponsorship and you know opportunities to partner with so much more of the ecosystem that's going on as is possible these days i mean that just didn't exist 10 even 10 years ago you know so well, i think the same this is something affiliate owners need to be mindful of this this you you, you have the same the problem same just a just a microcosm of the oh, same yeah. problem which yeah, is like absolutely. hey you take somebody and i would i would argue as an affiliate owner because i've done this is that Many of the people that you will lose over time are due to the fact that you failed to rein them in and they, mm-hmm. they, they, they jumped in, they were passionate about it, they doused themselves with intensity yep. and then two and a half years later, they're like, I'm broken, this is dumb. When we had multiple op- opportunities to intervene and say, hey, listen, like, slow down, it's fine. 
we're going to continue to progress. It's going to be a slightly slower, but you'll still be here in six years and you'll still enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I, you know, it all comes down to the question of what do you want out of it? And it's an easy thing. It's a very seductive thing when you're new, you're seeing all these things improve so quickly, you know, um, you're making progress like crazy. You're learning skills that you were never exposed to in the past. And you're like, this is awesome. And more will absolutely accelerate this and more will be better. And it has to happen now. And then, like you said, next thing you know, you're washed out or, you know, whatever, just it becomes too much. Right. Um, yeah, absolutely. Boz, let us let you go. You got competition director duties to get to. True. The workout, first workout, 2022 CrossFit Games is... Thanks for checking out this episode of the Best Hour of Their Day podcast. We appreciate you listening and choosing to have us help you in your passion for coaching and affiliate ownership. You can find more episodes just like this on all podcast platforms. If you're interested in learning more, you can reach out to us on any social media platforms or you can visit www.besthouroftheirday.com to book a call. If you found this episode helpful for you, please share it so that we can help other coaches and affiliate owners to help build a bigger and stronger CrossFit community. Thanks for listening.